if you're setting your switch in the dock, but it's not showing anything on the TV, here's a very detailed list of 11 things to try in order to get it to work. Some of these things are going to seem like common sense, but bear with me, I'm going to be very thorough about this. First of all, make sure you aren't inserting the switch into the dock backward. The side with the switch logo on it and the TV symbol on the bottom left needs to be facing you. And the switch's screen also needs to face you when you drop it in. Is your switch even on when you place it into the dock? Double check. Make sure the screen is lit, then drop it into the dock. If your switch isn't coming on at all, make sure it has a charge. Make sure you have power coming from the wall to the dock, because the switch cannot power the TV signal with its own battery. Start at the wall and make sure the adapter is plugged into the outlet. If there's a light switch on the wall, make sure it's on, and make sure the other end of the power cord is fully inserted into the AC adapter port on the back of the dock. Make sure you're using an official Nintendo power adapter. If you're using a plain USB-C cord and adapter, or you're using a third-party adapter, they may not function properly with the dock. A simple USB-C cord can be used to charge the battery on the switch, it just can't be used to power the image to the TV. So if you don't have one, go out and buy an official Nintendo power supply for the switch. And I emphasize the word go out, I don't recommend buying one online because you may end up with a fake. If you have an official power adapter, it may have been damaged due to the strain you've put on it or from the dock itself putting a strain on the cord. The original model of the dock, which I have here, kind of bends the cords coming out of it and that might damage it in the long run. Perform this test to make sure the cord is working. Bring the switch's battery charge below 100% if it isn't already. Then unplug the power cord from the dock and plug it directly into the switch. Check the battery symbol on the screen to see if it's charging. If it is, the battery symbol will show as green with a lightning symbol next to it. If it isn't charging, the battery symbol would just be black with no lightning symbol. If it's not charging, it's very likely that you need to replace the power adapter. So once again, go and buy a new one. Now, it could also be that it's not charging because the port on the bottom of the switch is faulty, or there could be something internally wrong with the unit. This would also prevent it from working in dock mode. In that case, you're likely going to have to have the unit repaired, and I'll speak more on that in a few minutes. Make sure you have the correct HDMI input selected on the TV. For example, if you plugged your HDMI cord into what is labeled as the HDMI 2 input on the back of the TV, you need to pick up the remote and change the TV input to HDMI 2. The button you need is often called input or source. On mine, it's just a symbol that looks like this. Once I tap that, I can toggle over to HDMI 2 through the menu. Other types of TVs may function differently from what I'm showing you here, but they should have some way to select the right input. If you're finding this video helpful, feel free to hit that like button. Let's continue. Your HDMI cord may be the issue. Make sure it's fully plugged in to the back of the TV and the other end is fully plugged in to the port on the dock. If that all checks out, swap it with a different HDMI cord to determine if the original one was faulty. The dock itself may be the issue. The switch needs to be situated in it just right to get the signal to the TV. Debris down in the dock may interfere with that. So clean up the bottom area with a toothbrush or something like it. And turn the dock upside down and slap it to make sure there's no debris in it. Check the functionality of that spring-loaded mechanism that sits at the bottom of the dock. It's a rectangle that surrounds the USB-C port. You should be able to press all the way down on it, and when you let go, it should pop right back into position. If it's not behaving in that way, there's multiple paths you can take. One, you could buy a new dock. They do sell them separately. You can also call Nintendo to see how much it would cost to send it in for repair. A third option is only for those who are good at taking things apart. I made a whole separate video that shows how to take apart the entire dock. There's there's a link to that video in the description of this one. You may have a broken spring or there may be a piece of debris down in the spring mechanism and that video will show you how to get down into it to fix it. 
This solution is risky, but if you're desperate, consider trying it. It involves going into maintenance mode and performing a limited factory reset. I advise you watch this whole segment before deciding whether or not to attempt it, just to know what you're getting yourself into. Hold down the power button until the switch goes off. Then you need to hold down three buttons at once, volume up, volume down, and the power button. The up and down button are kind of one big button, so I find it easier to push down in between the two, and that way I could use two of my fingers instead of three. It still took me quite a few tries to get it right, but you need to hold them down until you see two logos go by, and then you'll end up on this menu. Initialize console without deleting save data is the one I'm about to show you. And you'll see underneath it, it says it'll delete everything except for save data, screenshots, videos, and user information. What you don't want to do is accidentally slip down the menu and choose the third option, which wipes out all the data. You only want to choose that one if you're going to sell your system or you bought someone else's used system and their data is still on it. So choose the second option. It'll take you to a screen with more detail about what it's about to do. The main points are that everything you have on an SD card will become unusable except for screenshots and videos. It will not downgrade the system to a previous firmware version. Games you have saved will be deleted. There's a few things on this screen that it doesn't tell you and I'll tell you more about that after I get done with the process here. Hit next. You'll have one last chance to back out of it. If you want to proceed, select the orange button. It's going to do a reboot and it'll behave as if you just turned on the system for the first time ever. It'll take you through prompts to set up the language, accept the user agreement. It'll have you set up the internet connection again and the time zone and it'll ask you if you want parental controls. When I did this, I didn't think I would have to go through these things again, but the more you know. On the home screen, all the title cards to the many games I had are now gone. The only one there is for the game cartridge I still had inside the system. I clicked into the game and it did have my game saves from where I played it before, so that's good. It also remembered the two user profiles I had set up. I popped in another game cartridge that I had played before. Before the reset, I had version 2.1 but now it's been reset back to 1.0. By highlighting the game on the menu and pressing the plus button, I can tell it to update to the latest version. Once it performed that update, I went into the game and once again, it has remembered my game saves. Before the reset, I also had some non-cartridge games that I had downloaded onto the system and they have been wiped out. If I go into the eShop, I can re-download them. However, it's asking for my password to my Nintendo account. I'm pretty sure this was something I didn't always need to do when I entered the eShop. I'm not sure if it's asking me because I did the reset, but I did not have the current password written down, so I had to use the forgot your password option to make a new one. After that, I was able to search on the game in the shop. It had it marked as purchased, and I went one screen further into it, and it had a button that says re-download. I did that process and reinstalled the game. If you're going to do this reset, I recommend you make a list of every game you have downloaded onto your Switch because you may have forgot a purchase. I advise you don't wait to re-download them. We don't know how long these games are going to be on the eShop. They could be delisted. Nintendo actually says right now that not every game is re-downloadable, so you might want to dig into that ahead of time before doing this reset. The Switch has a lot of things inside of it that can go wrong, that can cause the image to not appear on the TV. A tiny piece on the circuit board may go bad, you just don't know. But your last option would be to call Nintendo and discuss it with them. From what I heard, they will try some things over the phone with you, probably some of the things I showed you today. And if nothing works, they'll offer a way for you to send it in for repair. Depending on the warranty status or whether they classify your issue as a known defect, they may do it for free, but you won't know until you call. If this video did help you remedy your issue with your Switch, let me know in the comments which solution worked. Have a good day everybody!